Hey, which one of these? Is it this one? There we go. No. Oh man. to stand tall stand firm why are you sliding back like that man dog come on i don't even know how to work this no more okay here we go we do this done this before okay wow okay Are we starting? <laughs> How does one return to YouTube after like seven months? Hmm, somebody tell me. Let's start there. I don't know, okay? I don't know, but I'm here and this moment is happening. It's happening. This is gonna be a little bit of a fumble or maybe not. Maybe the Lord will speak through me very clearly and everything's gonna be fine. Either way, it's happening. Hi everyone. <laughs> My name is Gaby. I also go by Gabrielle. Here on the channel, we've been Miss GCH, but you know guys, I don't know how I feel about the name anymore. I think I told you this before I disappeared last year. I don't know if I'm as connected to Miss GCH as I once was. And I think we're growing out of her. I think this conversation started when I graduated with my PhD in 2021. Um, and just feeling like the miss, well actually it was y'all that were in my DMs and in the comment sections like, okay, so we don't wanna do Miss GCH anymore. We're not feeling that because you're a doctor. Where does the doctor come in? And I'm like, y'all have a point, but I just, Dr. GCH wasn't speaking to my spirit and I'm like, we probably have to do some soul searching and some, some figuring out to figure out what the new name of the channel and of my social media will be. So for now, those of you who are watching this for the first time are like, sis, what are you even talking about? I don't know, my name's Gabby. <laughs> my name is Gabby. Let's just start there, okay? I just feel like, after seven months, which is the longest YouTube break I've ever taken since I started my channel in 2018. After seven months, I don't know what, maybe it was six months. Was it six months, y'all? Six or seven months. Eh. Longest break I've ever taken, and I feel like I just don't know how to get all of the things out that I need to say to y'all. Like, I literally, let me show you, okay? We've got notes for days. Do you feel me? No, four days. So just be ready because this is definitely gonna be a series. Um, based on my notes, there, there, well, I'm not gonna tell you how many parts because then you might tune out. So just know there's multiple, <laughs> there's multiple parts to the story. So if you don't get everything that you're hoping to get out of this particular video, just keep watching because I'm sure I will hit it what you might be coming here to, to know about. This series, I think I'm gonna call What Happened in 2022 because I feel like that's the only fitting title for me to come back and try to explain what happened in 2022. Um, so much. I am truly, if you don't sense it, I am a whole, I don't want to say whole different person because I'm still me. A lot of the things that make me me are still present, but I just feel like such a different woman, a different person, a different believer. Um, everything is different and that's okay. At first, I really struggled to accept that that is my new reality, but now I know that that's okay me being completely different is not only okay, it is a part of life. We are all growing and becoming different people. And so that is the backdrop for this video. We are not gonna get somber too quick because I, I wanna keep this 
as light as I possibly can. Like, I'm not here to just whine and cry about how awful 2022 is because actually my current perspective of 2022 is that 2022 probably saved my life. Like, 2022 changed my life, but it also saved my life and it has adjusted my entire perspective about so much. So we're gonna try to keep it light, but yeah, come along for the journey. The light, I'm sorry, is currently changing a whole bunch. It is evening time, the sun is going down, so I'm gonna try to get as much of this recorded before the sun legit goes down. But if I look like I'm changing colors, that is why. I have like rapid fire, okay, I made a list of like rapid fire updates that I don't wanna spend time, cause y'all know I can talk, I can get lost in the sauce, We got through the fun stuff, we got through the cute stuff. Now let's get down to the real reason y'all are here. <laughs> okay, I have my notes to keep me on track here. So let me just do a brief scan of how we're gonna start this. I mean, we can just acknowledge the reality. If you've been here for a while, you know that I was very publicly a hot mess in 2022, in a variety of ways. And I thought that like the hot mess of my life had started at June 2022 with my very public broken engagement. But it didn't. What I've acknowledged since as I've grown through and like been on this healing journey over the last six, no, more than six months. Wow. Um, over the last like eight months. What I'm coming to realize is that th it was a buildup. I've been open with you guys really since the final year of my um, degree. So 2020, pandemic world, whose life wasn't kind of a hot mess in pan pandemic world, but I think that started like a snowball um, and it snowballed and it was like gradual, just a lot of new experiences, new heavy experiences. That was a very hard year for me as I've already opened up about on my channel, so I won't get into now, but um, you can definitely go watch those videos, but like I was dealing with a lot of things in Virginia and one of my coping mechanisms when things are like that is like just push through, like just keep going, you know, put one foot in the front of the other, like it will all work out. And it does, but that's not a healthy coping mechanism. <laughs> it just leads to like super, super, super bad mental health and like lots of questions and that's where I was. And it was coming out in different ways on my channel. Um, one way was my absence. So those who were with me in the beginning know I was hitting pretty much one or two videos every week. Um, and then I just stopped at a certain point or like even when I had a rhythm of one a week, I would just be gone for like months at a time. Um, and so that was one signal. Um, my emotions were kind of all over the place. I felt very much like had so many questions. I feel like I've been in this like extended quarter life crisis since I turned 25 where I just have so many questions and my mind is racing and trying to make sense of my world and the way I do things and how did I make the decisions that I came to and all this stuff. Like who am I at this big age of 28, almost 29 now? That's crazy. I'll be 29 in three weeks, two weeks, what? Almost 30, huh? Anyway, so before I like unpack it all, I do wanna say you might be disappointed in this video or even with this entire series. I mean that like I think social media world, although I am so grateful for the opportunity to share my testimony and be vulnerable and all of those things, you still have to be careful in these internet streets. Like people have a boldness now. My pastor was just talking about this a couple weeks ago of like, everyone on social media has something to say 
everyone. And we live in a world where like, we are so aware of everyone's opinions and thoughts and feelings about everything, anything. Like you could post the sky is blue and you're gonna get comments on it. You know what I'm saying? Like you're gonna, like people are going to agree, challenge, post an article, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody has their, their thing, their opinion about every single thing. And that is a lot to feel in general as a human, but it's definitely a lot for somebody like me who is breaking out of being a people pleaser and breaking out of considering everyone's opinions and feelings and thoughts with every decision that I make, um, which I've done most of my life. Um, tap dance for the people <laughs> is what I've been doing. I didn't know I was doing that until I hit about 25. But then I was like, oh, like I visually map out my life based on what the people say is good for me and what they think I should do. And so I profess that to say, I, I want to be cautious with how I share this. Even in my vulnerability, I have to maintain a sense of privacy, mainly because I, like, this is my actual life. You know what I'm saying? This is not like, you know, um, a Disney movie. Um, it's very much not a TV drama. It's not even a Real Housewives of the Potomac because Real Housewives of all of them places be low-key scripted you know what i'm saying like this is my actual life like i actually have to feel whatever consequences of my behaviors and my actions and things that i say so because i still have to live this life and because i want to be sensitive to the people that are involved in this testimony um i'm not about to be on here spilling bashing and doing all of that so if that's why you came here to hear the story then i'm just gonna let you know that so that you can save yourself however many minutes the rest of this video will be okay so first of all why have i been gone like literally just gone even honestly on instagram tiktok i wasn't a super heavy tiktok poster anyway facebook like people especially while i was in college were used to like regular updates on my life i used to post at one point on instagram like three four times a day before it was like not cool to post three four times a day and like we were all just posting a whole bunch if we were interested like i really built a lot of my community back then and so people were used to that from me even up through um completing my dissertation like i just i love sharing my journey and what the lord is doing in my life i love sharing that with people so it was pretty obvious like if you go to my instagram now like i think i have like six or eight posts from 2022 like not very many um and around that time since it's just been really limited what i share i've just i've been away and people can probably interpret that a few different ways but for me it was really i needed to pull away to go through my process i had to figure it out and allow the lord to show me what he was trying to show me without feeling like i needed to explain everything minute by minute and give live updates about like how life was like if i'm being honest i was in a very very dark place this entire journey hasn't been all hell and high water but even just needing time to reflect and to ask questions and you know just there were I mean there were days where literally it was a task to get up get out the bed and show up at work and even though I work from home most times and all I had to do was show my face on the camera like that felt like labor like turning the camera on felt like labor um and so I just that's where I've been I've been trying to heal and i think people say that and like healing journey i've been seeing that a lot on social media and we feel like that looks a certain way you know like i was meditating every day and i was like you know vibing and whatever the heck else like you know even being super deep in my word or something like that like when i say healing i mean like surviving with a goal of healing is what i was doing during that time like whatever i could handle for that day whatever god gave me to deal with to process that day i did it as i went some days that meant turning the camera on for a meeting after the meeting's over bawling my eyes out for hours until the next meeting you know what i'm saying or sitting there silently so much 
So much of the processing journey was literally just sitting still and quiet, um, staring at the wall sometimes. <laughs> so that's what I was doing. If you were wondering where I was and what that time period was for me, I literally needed that time. I had to make a shift in trying to show up for the world and I had to show up for myself. So what was life? after June 2022. Um, uh, so this particular video, I'm not gonna get super heavy into um, the broken engagement. I think that it is a conversation for a later video. So um, we will have that conversation. But um, as you all know, I announced on here and on Instagram that um, I was engaged at the end of June of last year. And then about three weeks, or so later, um, I came out and shared with everyone that um, we were not moving forward with the engagement. And um, just thank you everyone for the celebrations and all of that, because I didn't really get a chance to say all of that to everyone. Um, but yeah, I shared that. And so life after that, honestly, life during that whole period is like, I remember it, but I don't. It was very cloudy. Like, it's it's very cloudy in my memory. Um, but generally speaking, I'm going to try to recall for you what happened after that moment. So basically, like I said, I started that journey of just like, I really came into myself. I had to lean heavily on the people closest to me. I, um, like, emergency urgently went back to therapy um, because I had found myself in a really dark place that I didn't think um, or I knew I wasn't going to be able to pull myself out of. There was no willing myself out of that place. Um, and so I leaned heavily on the people closest to me and literally, like I said, just tried to get from day to day. Because I just, I, it felt, it felt like I was out of touch with reality. Like, I think that's why it's cloudy for me is like, I still sometimes can't believe like, that that was my life. Like, never, when you picture your engagement, like you don't, you don't picture this. Um, I said I wasn't going to talk about all this. Okay, back to what I was saying. Um. So then um, in August, I shared the other video with you all. I was just kind of having a late night moment and I decided to pull out the camera and share a little piece of that journey. And I thought I was going to be able to share again this journey in real time. And I just realized after sharing that video that I just, I wasn't strong enough to do that. I wasn't, I didn't feel comfortable doing it. I just, I wanted to, but I just didn't think I had it in me to share. I was going through so much mentally, um, spiritually, emotionally. Um, so then September came along and I decided to take a week off of work. Um, I hadn't used my vacation hours really at all last year by that point. So I know I just needed time to like sit with myself and let myself be without having to focus on work. Cause it's, honestly, between June and that point in early September, I felt like I had just been like going through the motions, um, showing up at work, showing up well, surprisingly, I mean, enough to get promoted, but um, just still going through a lot um, behind the scenes and feeling like I was putting on a face at work so that I could get through it. And so I was like, okay, take a week. Um, and thank God for like the supervisors that I have at this place and like just a super supportive team because they were like, go, like be, do whatever you need to do. I originally wanted to go somewhere and like stay at like Hocking Hills um, or like a cabin or something like that to kind of just really take myself out of this the space as in the literal apartment that I was in and have a change of scenery really in nature and figure out my life <laughs> um, journal all of that. Sadly, I didn't get to do that um, because life was hitting like a ton of bricks in another way. Um, which is, I was, uh, moving out of my apartment. So I had shared that in that last video with you all in August that I made the decision not to resign my lease at my apartment. I loved that apartment. Y'all know how I felt about that apartment, but everyone was being super dumb, stupid around that time with rent prices. And I was just like, I literally will not like, I won't, I could have afforded it, but it would have stretched me super thin. And I just felt like that was, I, it wasn't worth it to do that financially when I'm trying to like build a financial legacy right now. Um, like I just have different financial goals and it does not make sense for me to stay in the apartment. So I spent that week 
taking care of myself a little bit. I did get a deep tissue massage and I got something, I forget all the stuff that I did that week. Um, but I did take some time for myself. I had a nice little woosa, but I also spent the rest of the time packing up my entire apartment. So I didn't get the kind of rest of mind and like the detaching and all that, that I thought I was going to get. But I did take some footage of that week. I have not looked at this footage, so I have no idea what I'm gonna end up putting in here, but I'm going to put some footage of that week in now. Squat. All right, or we got split squat jump to a squat jump. Friends in the industry, my brothers been my brothers. Name. So they we got that lungs, lungs, and then the squat. Me, yep. Me more than that. Yeah, I know. Uh, I hey, yep. Hey. Then we stop and now we come back. We gonna tap those hey. shoulders. Where are you going? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Four, three, yeah. Two, yeah. One. We don't stop. We don't stop. We don't stop. We don't stop. We're about to take our run, okay? About to take our run. We're going to so I didn't get really much of any footage of uh, class because it rained. Now I am here at Walmart, about to go in and get packing supplies, which I don't really know how much I need. So I'm going to just start off probably with some basics. Moira, just go. Hello, friends. It's Sunday, and I'm just now picking up the camera. It is 5.07 p.m., and I've had a full day. Um, I said I was going to wake up and do all that stuff before church, right? Didn't happen. I slept literally until 11 o'clock service. The last service I could attend was 11.30. So I threw on some clothes and got to church. And I'm so glad I did because the message was so on time. The message was about finding rest when your soul is tired and how to go to God and um, what it really means when he says, um, come to me, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Um, and I felt like it was the perfect setup for my week of just self-care and taking time to rest and um, just believing that God will meet me here and that, um, me having this opportunity to rest is intentional, it's important, and, um, I should treat it as such and just really seek God, um, for the rest that he's already promised. So, very glad I went to service and then I hung out with a friend after service, Jayla, I think you all have met her before, um, and so we went to Playa Bowls and got smoothie bowls and then I went and hung out with, um, my other friend Bianca and her kids and her friend Sal and we were just chilling and they're actually getting ready to decorate for fall. Um, so I think I'm going to go back over there later to help them decorate for fall since I don't get to decorate my own house because this is definitely the time I'm not getting emotional. I'm not. Um, this is definitely the time when I would be decorating my house. Fall is a serious matter in my house. I love fall. This is my absolute favorite time of the year. And so it's a little sad to see my things in boxes and not getting put out anywhere and not, you know, going through the aisles at Hobby Lobby and Marshalls with a cart and a plan for what I'm picking up in my fall scented candles and all of that. So but yeah, I am right now going to um, try to get scheduled for a massage this week because that's one of the things I definitely want to do this week is to have a spa experience. Um, and so I'm trying to get that scheduled because honestly I should have scheduled it 
a long time ago. I'm gonna try to do that and um, plan out the rest of my week. I'm gonna go out in nature this week. Um, I got a couple park ideas of where I could go. I really wanted to do the getaway house. Um, if you've heard of that, I want to do that so bad, but I am still gonna do it at some point. They're actually opening one closer to Columbus. They said, I think later this year, or early next year. Um, so I'm gonna do it as like a weekend getaway because um, it's kind of expensive. I was gonna go somewhere for the full week this week to stay and just be with myself, but stuff be expensive. <laughs> um, but I wanted to do the getaway house since I can't, I'm going to just go spend some time in nature. So I got some park ideas and um, yeah, I just want to journal. I have some library books that I haven't read and I would be so happy if I could finish all four of them this week because I will have the time. Um, so I am just going to plan out my week and see kind of uh, how I can schedule it so that I'm really intentional and I don't spend the entire time scrolling on social media and then miserable that I didn't actually use this time the way I wanted to. It's easier to be numb, to be honest. It's easier to be numb and to... Um, kind of be like just in a state of shock and kind of go through life without like um, or go through this painful season without like really engaging and not really sitting with your thoughts and all the things that are going on inside of you but I'm trying not to do that because it doesn't really lend itself to healing um, and sometimes you have to survive like that like there have been points across these last couple months where that was the only way I could survive and so I, that's just what I had to do because you still got to show up to work and you still got to show up in places um where people need you and so sometimes it is easier to just like go numb just kind of put things behind in the, in the back of your mind and not think about it um but this week I know I need to lean in and that's a little bit scary if I'm being honest um it's a little bit scary to think that I'm going to allow myself to sit with the depths of pain and um, sit with all the thoughts and to journal and to even sit with God and ask the questions that I've been avoiding or to listen for him to say things that will will heal for sure, but also that may, you know, rip the rip the scab off of the of the wound and the scab is barely formed. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I am excited about this week. I know I need it, but it's also just a little bit, I don't know if fear is, is the right lens for this, but it is a little bit scary. Everybody and their mother was in the Starbucks line today. I figured because we're all off work mostly and um, yeah, everybody was just at Starbucks. So I waited in line for like 15, 20 minutes probably. I get up there and there I ordered a venti because I'm like if it's free we don't get a venti because why not well y'all they were out of cups so he was like I can give you two talls which honestly does not equate to a venti or maybe it does I got a black vanilla latte because they didn't have my white chocolate mocha I added caramel to it because I need caramel anytime I drink coffee and then I got the pumpkin Pumpkin cold foam? Pumpkin... Pumpkin cold foam. Actually, I hope they put... No, they did put it in there. That orange stuff has to be it. So they put the pumpkin sweet cream cold foam, which is like a blend of, I guess, like pumpkin spice, the sweet cream cold foam, other fall things are in there. I don't know. Um, but I've heard it's really good. I wanted to go full pumpkin spice latte, but I've never really had one and I was kind of scared to like waste my free drink on something that was nasty So I was like, let me get a latte that I know I'll drink and get the cold foam because I've heard great things about the cold foam So we're about to try it right now for the first time Oh Oh Looks good Well, hi This is me with the post spa glow I feel great. The facial clearly was awesome. Um, and the deep tissue massage was great. Although I must say, in full transparency and honesty, it was not a deep tissue massage. And I want to know why the masseuses of the world are afraid of the deep tissue. This is the second masseuse that I've had that has been like, I don't want to hurt you. I don't want you to walk away in pain. Y'all don't understand, when I came and I applied for the deep tissue massage, it was because I wanted you to hurt me. The knots in my shoulders and back have been 
accruing since my first year of college, 10 years ago. A girl needs an elbow in the shoulder. That's what I'm here for. So she was just so adamant about like not hurting me. And I, I already knew when she started, I was like, oh. This is about to leave me with much to be desired at the end of this, and she did. I'm feeling good, you guys. This week has not looked like what I thought, and I still need to make sure today I spend time to like sit in journal and like be with myself, so I'm gonna pay attention to that. I probably need to go to a park or something today to do that, because I, ha I still haven't really done that. I wanted to journal and pray and like really sit with my emotions, so... I feel like it's possible that I've been distracted from that and haven't really stopped with my emotions. So, funny story that's actually not funny at all. In the previous clip, you heard me say, like, I was trying not to avoid my feelings and just be numb. And y'all, I have this montage of footage to show you that I had no recollection of this, but I went through the footage for the first time when I went to insert it, and all of it looks like this. It's packing, it's organizing, it's getting myself ready to go. I thought for sure I had clips of me talking about my emotions, talking through my emotions, like all of it. And I know those moments happen, but I guess I didn't catch them on film. Like I really had no idea that I was really doing the very thing I said I didn't want to do, which is avoiding <laughs> my feelings, avoiding having a process and just working. Um, yeah, I like I said, I knew I spent that week packing and it was probably a good thing that I had that week to pack um, with no distractions so I could get it all done, which I did. But I definitely avoided and did not do what I needed to do to honor myself and give myself that time. So yeah, I just had to come on and explain this montage of footage and why it all ended up being <laughs> packing footage and none of me actually processing my emotions. I mean, this is real time evidence of what it's like to work, work, work and avoid what you're actually feeling and going through. In summary, grief is hard out here, y'all. Grief is hard. Address the elephant in the room. Literally the room is the elephant. <laughs> You probably noticed a very different background than my apartment. I did move out in September, uh, I think the week after that video that I just, or the video clips that I just shared, and moved in with a friend and her family from church. And it was a miracle how God did it and put it together. The way that I was taken care of is a miracle. And I'm actually gonna save that entire miracle story for the next video. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably already have a little bit of a tip off because yes, I did post about it, but I wanna share that adventure and all that that was in my next video. So that's where we're gonna stop today because I know this is so much footage. This is probably a lot for you all to take in. <laughs> and probably just overwhelmed at the fact that I literally decided to post on YouTube again. I know, it's crazy. So that's what we're going to stop for now. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm so excited for the other parts of what happened in 2022 in my world. So stay tuned if you're interested. I love you all. Thank you for supporting me even still. And I will see you guys in part two.